The D-Play Bluetooth speaker is a 2.0 channel speaker in a short format size aimed to improve your audio may be underpowered or just flat sounding coming from your flat screen TV, your gaming monitor up to 49 inch or even your Windows based notebook or tablets that will never be having the best speaker like the Apple M1 Pro MacBooks. So this speaker right here helps to improve that and it's just priced under 70 USD. The front side is mesh metal finish while the top, back and bottom is glossy finish for that premium look. However, for cleanliness and longevity, I prefer matte finish for an overall aesthetic look. Now on the bottoms right here on each side is the silicone feet that is large in size for extra grippiness on any flat surface. Now when it comes to size, it is measuring 50cm long, 6cm high and 7cm width with an overall weight just under 900 grams. From the front perspective, looking at the left side is actually matte plastic finish similar to the right side where it houses the physical manual controls right here. You have the power control, the input selector between six different inputs as well as the volume rocker. Aside from the Bluetooth 5.0 pairing, there are five physical ways you can connect to the soundbar as well. The connection is located on the back left side of the soundbar. Here you can see the USB port, the auxiliary 3.5mm port, optical port, the power adapter DC in. But on the very sides right here is the HDMI port as well as the micro SD port. So they are located on the left back side. Now aside from that, looking at the sides right here, you can see there is the wall mounting for your screws. Uh, they don't include the screws. This is actually a uh, foam padding. One is located right here on the left side and on the right side itself. It's a little bit glossy and fingerprint magnet. The package includes a power brick, remote control, HDMI cables, optical cable, 3.5mm headphone jack cables, and your typical RCA cables, left and right channel with 3.5mm ends. Pretty much that's it. Looking at the remote control right here, you have your power control, your mute control, your Bluetooth control, micro SD, optical, HDMI, USB, and auxiliary 3.5mm jack, your volume control, and EQ. Now, EQ has three settings. First is new mood that focus on mid range or vocals type of boosting. Next is movie mood that focus on low frequency or bass boosting to have that cinematic experience as much as possible. As well as lastly, music mood basically is a flat profile. Aside from that, it's your typical three button array for media control. The D-Play speaker is using two full range dynamic drivers rated for 15 watts each for a total of 30 watts. However, the power adapter that they include right here shows an output of 18 volts at 2 amps making the power adapter 36 watts. That's the theoretical maximum limit that the speaker can go up to in terms of volume. However, I recommend to all my viewers never listen to any type of speakers, maybe single box, satellite, or even soundbar, listen at 100%. Always listen between 70% to 80% for the sweet spot at maximum volume. Now, when I rock the unit back and forth right here, you can see some of the components behind the grills. I even verify further by running an LED into the grill to see where are the components is. So something I noticed is the speaker units or the driver units is not located symmetrical. One is located correctly on the right side right here. There's an air port opening right here or base port. Basically, it's an opening that allows the air movement behind the driver units. But the second driver unit right here is located more of the center right here than symmetrical right here. So I assume that is pushed to the center is because there's the receiver unit right here. The circuitry is here because the controller is located on the left side, which I showed in the earlier part of the video. So when using the speaker in nearby situation between one meter and one and a half meters, let's say the gaming monitor is on top of the sound bar, the audio sounds center. It does not feel like left distorted. So gaming, productivity, content creation is fine. Listening to Netflix type of content, not listening but watching Netflix content is fine. Now when I use the speaker at a distance of two and a half meters to four meters, I realize at lower volumes there is a slight left shift of the audio right there. But when you listen at higher volumes, it's not significant. It kind of 
counterbalance itself technically. Today's sponsor is Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes to help sharpen your existing skills or to explore your creativity with new hobbies and topics. I am using the platform to learn more ways of improving my marketing methods and knowledge for my full-time job as well as to understand how to create better YouTube videos over the weekend. Recently, I watched through a class titled YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD aka Marcus Brownlee, one of the famous and successful YouTubers on the platform and how he makes great tech videos. There are benefits to be on board Skillshare like ad-free video experience so you can stay focused on your class, learn and explore at your own pace maybe on mobile or desktop at your own conveniences and new classes are added on a weekly basis so there's something to explore and learn along the way. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can try it out for yourself. So I have tested five out of the six input ports for the Bluetooth speaker because I don't have a streaming device that has the optical in and out. Now what I can say is starting with Bluetooth mode, it does work as intended but not necessarily having the clarity throughout the range. The bass is significantly a little bit distorted right there. The mids is doable and the highs is just messy. You will get better experience once you use the micro SD USB and the 3.5mm jack. They three sound the same. The bass is cleaner despite not having a subwoofer. It does try to be present right there. The mids is crystal clear, less wobbly effect. On the highs, it's not, you know, not the highest clarity, but it's much better than the Bluetooth, just a tiny bit messy. Now our test is based on the Apple 2021 MacBook Pro M1 Pro 14 inch with HDMI cable right here. So this is the best setup I could come out with when it comes to testing this speaker. My heart's been ripped wide open So many mixed emotions It's like I finally noticed I've been set free I've been set free I spent a lifetime running From our HDMI test, the bass is present as the full range drivers try its best to put some bass in despite not having a subwoofer in this soundbar. Thus, this soundbar is a 2.0 channel, not 2.1. The 0.1 refers to having a subwoofer. Now, when it comes to the mids or the vocal, it's good clarity with a tiny bit of warmth, generally much better than the four input ports that I mentioned before the HDMI test. Now, when it comes to the highs or the instrumental, it's clearer, less messy, but has that warm tonality and it tries to fight attention with the mid-range right there. So a lot of EQ tuning is necessary. Now just a side note right here, if you're using the Bluetooth, the USB, the micro SD as well as the 3.5mm headphone jack, you use the remote, there's 15 levels of audio adjustment on the Bluetooth speaker itself. Now, if you're using HDMI like we do for our test, the control is set by the streaming device. So basically, your remote for the D-Play right here becomes the second proxy remote as the main adjustment volume comes from the streaming device. Now, aside from that, let me summarize what this speaker is all about. This speaker performs from the lower mids to the upper mids. That's, that's the best the full range driver can do at this price point, which is Great. Now, this is aimed towards people with flat screen TVs with not much Twitter you know, strength 
to give you that loud volume, surround sound in a big room, or even, you know, monitors, gaming monitors for the matter. They are only using 2 watts to 5 watts because rarely you see 10 to 15 watts. That's only at the premium range gaming products. So this one helps to improve that audio loudness experience and a little bit more depth if you're not a headphones type of person. This is suitable for not necessarily gaming, but any general streaming content that focus and emphasize on vocals. So you can do your Netflix, your HBO, your YouTube, your Spotify, it will do fine. But what I like at this price point at 70 USD is they give you the option to be flexible by having six different input ports. So you can use it at home with HDMI for better sound experience. Maybe you want to have a camping experience with your, you know, four-wheel drive car, you can hook it up to your 12 volt DC and use 3.5, you can use Bluetooth, you can take it to a seminar, you can take it to a classroom to improve the audio experience. There's a lot of flexibility there. Would I recommend this product? It's based on your need and your decision. But what you need to know is if there is available discounts or price update, you can always check the video description where to purchase and the first pinned comment to know more about the pricing. Till then, I hope to review more D-Play products and more speaker products. I'm trying to arrange with more brands and I will see you guys in the next audio review. Ta-da!